Hi, this is the HD Before Bed series where I'm going to be talking in a little bit of a quieter voice because uh, I'm recording in a guest room and Jenny's sleeping in the other in the other room. In fact, uh, let me adjust the microphone a little bit. This is the ASMR hour. Here we go. You know how ASMR people are always like, you know, always doing stuff like that. Um, let's do it a little bit here. Okay. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to talk quieter, so I'm just going to turn the mic up a little bit. So what my idea here is that we'll just do uh, kind of like bedtime stories. I always loved bedtime stories as a kid. It was always something I, I really enjoyed. I always, uh, my mom would read to me quite often. And I would make her keep reading and keep reading. And then eventually I would read to myself and I would stay up late and just always be, um, be kind of reading. And so I'm going to just... I just think it'll be fun. Uh, it'll be fun to to read a little bit. So what we're going to be reading from is Jan van Denberg's Crash Course on Stars, and he actually wrote a little description of it. He says, "It's about history, about science, about human design and development of consciousness, and above all, it's about stars looking into the night sky, where humans started to give their authority to the unknown, God, all." feeling it, giving it meaningful sounds, words, names, stories, a natural order to be lost. So here we are. I made it for myself, true, but perhaps there is also something for you. 122 pages, including a star list. And this is the crash course on stars, which he shared with us um, in April of this year, 2022, on the Human Design Catalyst Group. And I really appreciate Jan. He's a, a true mystical scholar. And... Um, so maybe I'll actually, uh, let, let, me, let me read the preface here. And I think for this first session, we'll just read the first couple pages and then we'll comment on them. Preface. This is a crash course on stars, or in human design terms, about neutrinos and crystals. In this context, it is characteristic that astrology literally means knowledge of the stars, while it focuses much more on our solar system than on the actual stars themselves. The human design system education seems to follow that tradition. When somebody, what somebody stands for or not is discussed extensively, sun, earth, definition, type, profile, etc. The more because in that context, 74% of the neutrino data flow coming from our sun and Jupiter relates to who you are. However, deepening into the nodes where the other 25% from outside our solar system has its most influential entrance usually remains on the shelf. Human orientation in the past developed the illusion of a zodiac and stars on the wall. The stars on the wall, this is um, the idea of the ancients that we were actually inside of uh, some sort of... Um, ball or something like that or you know that that we were inside of a cave and that there was light coming through and the light was from the stars the stars were actually the cracks in the wall of the cave the cracks in the wall right and so he says human orientation in the past developed the illusion of a zodiac and stars on the wall historical hindsight gives the span of time to be able to look at that phenomena showing interest is inherent to the look for integration of a cosmic perspective in one's life, to be a passenger that values attuning to the evolutionary process. While cosmology actually seems a bit elusive, not particularly a challenge for practical application, this is the kind of information that, so to say, enriches the passenger. This is mind candy. This is the kind of thing that a passenger needs in order to hone their perception, to be able to see through the veils and to be able to see through the bullshit that's all around be able to see through the not-self-delusion and to understand what makes it all work. So, Jan writes, I thought it's time to beat the mattresses for myself. That's a funny uh, term, beat the mattresses. I never heard that. And perhaps for others, in awareness of the time frame we've arrived at, where commercial space travel is accessible to humans and thousands of satellites stand in front of our expansion in the sky, not to forget the Hubble Telescope Project, and since late 2021, its successor, successor, the James Webb Telescope, whose images and data will represent a new world, as Columbus did since 1492. 
Last but not least, all honor to Ra Uruhu, being heard through all. I just added some updates, illustrations, and supporting info, Jan writes. And he gives his password human design at keynoting.nl. So he's in the Netherlands. And, uh, he has a wonderful picture from arcan.net. Arcan Nair, really cool picture. And uh, all right, so I'm excited for this. I think, um, you know, for me, cosmology, like he says, it is, it is mind candy, but that's not a bad thing. You know, we, we tend to think in human design, anything of the mind is bad. And we tend to like really shun the mind candy because the mind candy is what pulls us away from ourselves and so on. And yet at the same time, he has a good point about piercing the veil, that, that we um, pierce the veil, so to speak, with the mind. That it's the mind that sticks its head through the clouds and gets to see, it's the passenger that gets to wake up. It's our reward for living our design, that our mind is now able to notice all this stuff that uh, you couldn't see before. So really excited to kick off this series. I hope you will stay with me through the series and enjoy watching, listening, uh, everything. And I hope to be posting these um, you know, regularly for a while. And uh, just, I'd love to hear what you think about it. I mean, what, what, what do you think about rave cosmology and its role in human design and its role for the passenger and its role as mind candy and, and what what its use is. I mean, I guess its use is to make life a little bit juicier, a little a bit more exciting, have a little more, richer story, a little more mythology. And maybe that's a good thing. 